Hi and welcome to Tribes Toolbox where you will find tips, tricks and stories by black women for black women. I'm Izin and I'm a freelance journalist. I'm actually the youngest person to have ever reported on the BBC's 10 o'clock news but I also write articles, do interviews and edit videos. So although I'm only 21 and just starting out in some ways, I'm really lucky to have experienced lots of different sides of the industry. So hopefully I can give you some tips and tricks that will help you as you start out on your journalism career. When people think of journalism, they usually think of just two roles, the reporter on the news or the journalist who writes the newspaper articles. And those are really, really important roles, but actually there are a number of jobs that are needed within the journalism industry. There's the researcher, they look in depth into a story. Who can we get reliable statistics, figures and facts from? Who are experts in the field that can give an informed opinion on the news? Did you know that Diane Abbott did this job before she became a politician? There's also the producer. She's in charge of the general concept and feel of the video. Where are the best places to film? Who are the best voices to film? How long should the story take to tell? The camera operator. She takes the footage that appears on our TV or maybe in our videos on social media. There's also the photographer. In text publications where they commission photos, this would fall down to the photographer to take those photos. And their photos might also be important in archive stories on the news where the pictures from 50 years ago might be relevant to us today. There's also someone like the video editor. They might have to look through several shots and interviews and decide how to put a piece together. They may be able to do this on a free reign or they may be supervised by more senior journalists or editors. Now, there are loads of different ways to start a journalism career and these different titles don't necessarily explain experience. There might be someone who started out as a local reporter and done it for several years and be really experienced, but then another media organisation might call their entry role something like a journalist. So don't worry too much about titles and things like that. So let's have a look at what kind of journalism qualifications are available. One of the most popular ones is something called the NCTJ. Some people do it as part of a master's course, but you can also do it as a standalone course. I did it as part of my journalism apprenticeship. The NCTJ is really good because you learn practical skills like doing a radio bulletin or filming or um, creating a radio package, but you also learn legal affairs. So for example, what are the laws on reporting in the courtroom or what are the Ofcom codes that you have to follow if you're broadcasting stuff for television? There is funding available for diverse students to do the NCTJ. So if you feel like you don't have the financial resources, definitely don't let that hold you back from applying. Now these qualifications are really good because they're industry recognised, however if you don't have it, definitely don't let that hold you back or think that you can't apply for certain jobs. Lots of big organisations have their own qualifications or courses you'll have to do when you start, which are basically equivalent to the NCTJ anyway, but if you can get it, it's a good thing to have. So there's the age-old question of whether you need to study media or journalism at university to become a journalist. Now editors are really divided on this, some really like it that you've got that experience and you have those um, specific skill sets, but on the other hand other editors prefer um, journalists who have an expertise in another field because really what journalists do is explain the world to other people, so if you have a politics degree you can explain political stories for example. The benefits of studying media or journalism is that maybe you'll have multimedia or filming skills um, such such as knowing your way around a camera or how to use recording equipment. But don't worry too much if you don't have these skills because hopefully you can pick them up on the job. So what about apprenticeships? I myself actually did an apprenticeship with the BBC called the Digital Journalism Apprenticeship and it was their first ever journalism apprenticeship. But ITV and Channel 4 also offer similar um, kind of programmes. Now I think they're really useful, especially at broadcast organisations, because there you can learn about radio, TV, as well as text publications and writing stuff for online. Whereas at places like newspapers, maybe it might be a bit more focused on print. But I think apprenticeships are definitely, definitely a good idea, especially if you get a qualification alongside them. Now what if you can't commit to journalism full-time at the moment? Maybe you already have a full-time job or maybe now is just not the right time for you. Well, there's no need to put the dream on hold. What you could do is start a portfolio, maybe your own blog and write about things that matter to you. Editors on social media sites like Twitter call out for pitches all the time. So this could become a paid side hustle. Why not leave them in the comments below? You never know who's watching. 
Now, when you're starting out, should you be working for free? This is a really, really important question and loads of people have lots of different opinions on it. Now, I think that if you're working for free, you should target smaller organizations because in these organizations, you'll get a chance to do more and really develop and hone your skills. I started out writing for something called Black Ballad, which is a lot bigger now, but at the time it was a really small team and I got to do interviews and I got to pitch ideas and innovate and try new things just because it was a smaller company. When you're working for somewhere for free, make sure that they're developing you in other ways do they care about your career development do they make sure that you can maybe meet other people um, at networking events and stuff like that do they know your career goals and are they helping you work towards them pause the video here and think of five smaller organizations that you could pitch to Great, so now you know who you're gonna to pitch to. What does a pitch actually look like? Well, there's one pitch template that I've always used. It's very simple. First, you write the title of your pitch. Then you have three or four paragraphs or short bullet points explaining the main points of your article. And the third bit is that you explain why that article or piece would work for that platform. I think this part's really, really important because it shows that you read the platform, it shows that you know what their audience is like, and it shows you've actually looked at their content rather than just blindly sending a pitch in. Now let's talk about networking. When people think of networking, often they get very nervous because they think it's about formal big networking events. Now these are important, but networking can also be following people on Twitter. Networking can also be realizing that someone else is starting out in your field and learning more about what they're doing and what skills they have. Networking could even happen somewhere like your local church. That's where I met Toby, who's behind Black Ballad. Now, when you're talking about more formal networking events, they can seem a bit daunting, but I really encourage you to go up to people, shake their hands and talk to them because being a journalist is also just about talking to people from all walks of life. What I find helped me is knowing what my USPs are. What are the things that I bring to the table that are important? Maybe you speak a different language. Maybe you're really good on social media. Maybe you know a lot about an audience that the media is underserving at the moment. Pause the video here and think about what some of your unique selling points might be. Now, when lots of people think of networking, they think of trying to speak to the editors or the directors, and this can be important, but I also think it's super important to network with people at the same point in their careers as you. Some of my best friends are people that were on the apprenticeship with me. We can collaborate together, we can talk about the challenges we face in the industry, and if we wanna start a cool new project, then we can reach out and we can do that together. Don't network up, network across. So the journalism industry does have a long way to go in terms of diversity and inclusion, but don't be discouraged because if you work hard, if you work smart, and if you just try your best, you really, really can have a great career. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Tribes Toolbox. Make sure to like and subscribe. And don't forget to check out all the other videos.